Hello and welcome to my channel. Here I talk about all kinds of spiritual movements and religious movements throughout known history. And if it's your first time here, I want to extend a warm welcome to you. Today I'm going to talk a bit about the Protestant Reformation. I'm not going to do this in any particular order just as things come to mind about the Reformation. This, of course, was meant to be a Reformation of the Roman Catholic Church, but it became much more. So let me start with Martin Luther because most people begin the Reformation teaching with Luther. Martin Luther was born the 10th of November uh, 1483, and he died on the 18th of February, 1546. He was married on uh, in April of 1523 to Katharina von Bora, one of the nuns who he rescued from the monasteries when um, the Reformation took place. And with his Katie, they had and raised six children. So most people date the beginning of the Reformation when Martin Luther posted or published the 95 Theses. That was in 1517. Actually, it was on October 31st that Martin posted his uh, propositions on the church door in um, his hometown in Germany. And from there, the 95 Theses were published and spread throughout Germany and the uh, other European countries, and this lit the fire of the Reformation. Now, there had been earlier reformers. If you've been tracing with me the history of the Christian Church, and most especially the Roman Catholic branch of the Christian Church, you know that it was very much politically involved. And when there had been people who were dissenters or disagreed with the doctrines and the practices of the church, many of them had been excommunicated and thousands had been exterminated by the political arm of the church. So this certainly was not the first attempt to make changes in the Roman Church. One thing that really helped the spread of the Reformation had been the very recent invention of Gutenberg's printing press. And this allowed for the fast dissemination of pamphlets and information to the populace something that had never happened before. Now, from Luther's point of view, he had long had questions about things that the church was doing and was dissatisfied with some of the practices. He had become a, a priest, a theologian, a college lecturer and a pastor of many people in Wittenberg, Germany. And yet he had this deep dissatisfaction with teachings and practices of the church at that time. But the one that was, I guess, the proverbial straw that broke the camel's back was the institution of indulgences. Now, indulgences were the practice of people paying money to the church, giving the church money 
and that would reduce their time in purgatory. Any uh, ju judgment that had been passed upon a deceased person or a person who was going to be deceased in the future could be lessened and shortened by handing over cash to the church. This not only was a, a, a in Luther's mind a, a an invalid practice of the church. The church he felt had no authority to forgive sins or to change God's judgment on a person. And most of the 95 theses were meant to be a discussion of the power of the papacy, the power of the church, and in particular, this practice of granting indulgences for cash. Luther's actions and the response of the people in Germany brought about the anger and the retaliation of the church. Luther was excommunicated. He was, in fact, declared a heretic and an outlaw. And at one point in his life, had to hide from the arm of the church that was out to exterminate him as they had done to the, their other uh, dissidents in the past. Well, Luther went on to talk about other practices of the church, not just indulgences. He would make a distinction between law and gospel. He would question whether a person could be saved through the sacraments of the church. He believed uh, very strongly eventually that proper doctrine should be based only upon the scriptures. And the church had historically based doctrine not only on the written word, but also on the oral teachings of the church fathers and the popes and others who were declared to be doctors of the church. This is called the magisterial teaching of the church. And it was the tradition of the Roman Catholic Church, and it was considered equal with scripture. Luther did away with that. He wanted sola scriptura, everything based upon scripture. He also believed that a person was saved by faith alone and not by any good works that they might do. And of course, the church had been teaching that one was saved through faith in God, faith in Jesus, but a part of this faith was the good works that the person performed. He went on to question the authority of priests in the life of the believer. He emphasized what was called the a priesthood of all believers. That is that each person should read and interpret the scripture in accordance with what their church taught, but that the church was not the final authority. He uh, downplayed the need for saints or priests as mediators. It isn't that he believed the church had no authority. Never in his wildest dreams did Luther believe the Protestant Reformation would become what it has today, where most believers think that they have the individual right to interpret scripture on their own. Luther, of course, thought that people would interpret scripture according to the teachings of the church. 
So the idea that a priest or a saint was an intermediary between you and God was eliminated. He also destroyed the idea for Protestants of celibacy of the clergy. The clergy were allowed to marry and in Luther's mind that gave the clergy a better understanding of the people that they ministered to. And they um, thought that no one could earn forgiveness from God, that this was the gift of God, and that the sacraments were an addition to the teachings of Scripture, that a man or a woman was to approach God individually and personally and only God would forgive their sins. Luther also liked the idea of the people receiving both the bread and the wine during their communion service during the Mass both elements of the Mass were to be given to the people, not just the bread. And he questioned transubstantiation, which was the Catholic doctrine of the real presence of Christ in the bread and wine of the communion. Now, Luther continued to teach and believe in the real presence of Christ in the communion. But it was consubstantiation, which I'll go into more detail about in another video where I compare the two uh, ways of seeing this real presence. But he did maintain the real presence of Christ. He maintained infant baptism and he did not eliminate all of the practices of the church. As this Reformation spread, however, it went through several waves and each one appeared to be more radical than the next. And I'll talk about some of the additional teachers and practices and teachings of what became known as the Radical Reformation in another video. So what Luther began spread through all the European and Scandinavian countries and rather quickly and as I said became more radicalized as it progressed. Well, Luther's original idea had been to reform the Roman Catholic Church, but he soon realized because of the church's reaction to his ideas that this was an impossibility and broke completely with the church. When the church demanded that he recant on his teachings and uh, declare that they were heresy and reconform and confirm the teachings of the church, Luther refused. Some of the writings of Luther are highly inspirational, although Lutheran over the years, uh, Lutheranism over the years did change their beliefs somewhat, and we'll see when we talk about Calvinism that the Lutheran position over time became more acclimated to the Calvinist point of view than to Luther's original point of view. Like all movements, uh, the leader and the founder of Lutheranism had his good and his bad qualities. 
known for being a harsh speaker and using rhetoric that to us today seems radical and impolite. It was the practice of the time. His comments contained many uh, anti-Semitic uh, references, uh, so much so that in later years, in recent decades, the Lutheran leaders today made public apology to the Jewish people for the things that Luther had said and recanted those uh, very sometimes vile and violent ideas that he expressed against the Jewish people. Uh, the Jew, the uh, Lutheran Church today does not share that attitude toward Judaism in any way or form. Well, we'll look more at Luther and the other leaders of the Reformation as I continue to talk about it. And if I've forgotten any of the things that Luther did, I'll insert them in the review section of my next video. So I hope you've learned something about the Reformation from this talk. And if you have questions or comments, that you'll leave them for me. If you have had part or experience in a Lutheran or a Reformation church, I'd love to hear your take on that and their history. I hope that you enjoyed this video and will leave your comments and questions for me. Consider subscribing to the channel and I hope that during this week you'll stay again safe and well, and I will see you real soon with another look at a spiritual movement or a religion from the past.